This morning, we have an infant to be blessed, and I'm going to ask the mother, the father, the grandparents, the godparents, the in-laws, the outlaws, and the uplaws, all of y'all come and stand across this way facing the congregation. The mother and the father will stand in the middle. Okay. Is this all? Anybody else? Come one, come all. Amen. Now I know, oh, you got some more? All right. God, Godparents? Okay, the Godparents, will you come closer? One of the Godparents here. On this side, grandparents here, godparents right here. Where are the godparents? Oh, the god. Are they here? Okay. All right. Well, okay. All right. All right. Okay. You sure this is it now? Anybody else want to join the uh, congregation? Amen. I see that this little fellow right here, he's intrigued by all that's going on and naturally he cannot comprehend everything that is transpiring there but one day he will uh jonathan and Kristen, befitting name and i don't know whether we can say coincidentally but uh it is uh it does fit into this occasion i'm gonna ask the two of you to come out and stand right there Okay. Well, oh, he's looking at me just like he knows what I'm getting ready to say. My goodness. First of all, I want to... Oh, okay. Mama, come on up. Where are you at? Oh, she's, she's coming. Oh, okay. We'll wait on you. Can she stand? Can she stand? <coughs> you want to let her stand right over here next to you, Daniel? You want her to stand right over here? No, I'm asking. Yeah, when she comes. Yeah. Daniel, you come on up a little bit. Yeah, let her. Okay, that'll be fine.
I think we have the primary participants here now, so we will begin. First of all, let me say that uh, this in blessing a child, this is not a christening. This is not a baptism. When you start talking about christening and baptizing infants, that's not of our theology. We believe that before a child like this can accept Christ, they have to make their own personal decision. They have to know what they are doing. So this is a blessing of this child. And then repeating responsibility of both the mother and the father and the grandparents. And while I'm thinking about it, give me um, Sister Beard, would you come? Because I'm going to be um, directing a responsibility to the church. So I'm going to let you stand up here to represent the church family. And then give me a deacon on that side. Uh, Brother Gray, you stand. Yeah, representing the church family. I think we got all of the pieces of the wheel, the cog together. Again, this is a blessing. And scripture from Old to the New Testament is filled with in terms of God's dealing in the lives of children. You remember Hannah in the Old Testament? How she prayed and asked God. She was barren and God opened her wound, gave her a son. His name was Samuel. But before Samuel got old enough to do his prophetic uh, duty, because God performed a miracle and gave her a son, she gave Samuel back to God. I don't mean literally, but spiritually, because she said he came from you, now he is yours to do with as you choose. So Mason Jeremiah Goins, that is the name, but then again, there are biblical inroads here. Jeremiah. We don't know what this young fella is going to be. We don't know in terms of what God's will, what God's plans are for his life. But we do know this. At this moment, with all the family here as, with, as reinforcement, there's a heavy obligation, Jonathan and Christian, that you have. And I want you to take this seriously. I was going to read it, but I think, being led by the Holy Spirit, I think we're just going to have a conversation. First of all, Jonathan, Scripture teaches that the man is the head, which gives you an awesome responsibility. A lot of people like to be head, but they don't want to assume the burden of being the head. You can't be head in terms of title or in terms of, of a position. Jesus Christ teaches us that. He's the head of the church. But you remember he made the statement, I have come not for others to wait on me, but I have come to minister to others. Jonathan, you have responsibility, first of all, to offer security to this child, you have to be a protector, a provider. These are physical things, but the greater thing is, Jonathan, and I know we are living in a chaotic society today, and some of the things that people do don't make sense. We know that a lot of things that have happened are not godly, and I know God is not pleased with it. But that doesn't mean you can't walk God's way. You can't do it when the circumstances are pleasant, Jonathan. You got to do it when you and Christian ain't liking one another. You got to do it when you have an argument. 
You got to do it when the family you call on don't come to your aid. You got to do it in bad weather a whole lot of times. And this little fella, as he gets older, he is going to be exercising, growing physically, mentally, emotionally. You're going to have to watch him. You're going to have to do a lot of praying for him. Now, as he reaches the age of maybe six or seven, he's going to be immolating, watching you, how you talk, how you act. Because I watched my grandson and my youngest son and how my grandson, how he watches his daddy. And whenever he's in distress, the first thing he calls on, he's going to say, granddaddy, he says, where's my daddy? That's the way God has made that spiritual bonding between the child and the father. So fulfill your responsibility. How do you do it? You have to be strong in your faith, and you have to walk the walk. It's just that simple. And you can't do it when you feel like it. You got to do it many times when you don't feel like it. Even when you are in the, in the hall of doubt, you still got to be that spiritual leader. You got to teach him and read to him out of the Word of God, which is the Bible. Don't just pray for him when things get a little bit rocky. Make a habit to pray for your son every night. Give him to the Lord in your heart because everything that we have here is just alone. We are alone from God because we ain't going to be here always. Then there's going to be another wave that's going to come in and take our place. So love him. Keep him in your heart. But realize that God has a plan, not your plans, but his plan. Kristen, mothers have more responsibility than just bearing the child. God has given mothers a nurturing spirit. There is, um, I don't know, it's something you can't see, but it's a mystical thing between mother and child. And usually children, whether they are male or female, they, when things get pretty rough in life, first thing they are calling on mama. And I guess that's God's plan. I don't know what type of walk you have with the Lord. If you don't have the walk that God wants you to have, start getting that walk. You know the depth of your faith. You don't have to reveal it to anybody. But all of us can get closer to the Lord than what we are. I want to get closer to the Lord. There's some things I want him to put in my life that I'm not satisfied with. So Jonathan and Kristen, I want to ask you this question. First of all, do the two of you all, are both of you all willing to nurture and to train this child in the fear and in the admonition of the Lord? If you are willing, you will say, I do. Are you willing to live? before your son so that when he gets old enough he's going to start asking you questions and are you willing to answer those questions by the wisdom that God gives you if you are willing you will say I do and then finally are you willing to just be there for your son you don't have to buy them a lot of stuff. Nowadays, kids don't need all the junk they get anyway. But he does need you. He needs your love. Because your love is an example of Christ's love. You see what I'm saying? So are you willing to demonstrate that love to him and to give it freely? 
without any price tag attached to it as God loves us. Are you willing to do that? If you are, you will say, I do. To Deacon Gray and Mother Beard, you are representing the church family. We too have a responsibility to this child, not for the ceremony's sake, but when this child maybe starts going to Sunday school here, we have a, a heavy obligation to teach the child, to guide this child the right way, not with harsh language, but with love, with understanding, with tenderness. Brother Gray, did you hear what I said? Okay. Now, everybody has to work together. Church family, mama, daddy, grandparents, godparents, great grandparents, great great aunts, uncles, cousins, the whole tribe. The old saying goes, it takes a community, a village, a tribe to raise a family or to raise children. And it does. It takes the strength of everybody coming together and then looking at the product when he becomes maybe about 18 or 20 and you see him, strong young man, walking in the ways of God, oh, you're going to be so proud, so proud. And you're going to thank God that all of your prayers were answered that he is walking the way that God wants him to walk, that he doesn't get in a lot of trouble. He doesn't sort with bad company, wrong company, but that he wants to make something of his life. That's going to be your next worry. It's going to be your next worry. But lean not to your own understanding, but in all your ways, what? And he will do what? Direct your path. I want you now... Kristen, lay your hand on Mason. Grandmother, is it possible that y'all can lay a hand on him? Can y'all come around and find a way? God, parents, where are you? Oh, aunt, okay. Come up here and see if you can lay a hand on the, on the child. And I tell you what, great grandma, is that right? Okay, right. There you go. You hold her hand. Uh, I think that's it, right? Okay. Let us bow our heads in prayer. Gracious Father, we call on thee in the name of Jesus Christ because he has taught us to pray thusly. And he has told us that we ask anything in his name that you would hear the prayer. We lift this infant now, Mason Jeremiah Goins. We give him back to you spiritually, emotionally, psychologically, He's yours to do with as you choose. You gave him. We ask that you would protect him, guide him. And when he reaches a certain age of understanding who Jesus Christ is, I pray to God that Jonathan and Christian will be living such a Christian life that he will want to know more about their God and that he will eventually surrender and that he will start walking with the king. We pray for the whole family, everyone that's here and then those that are not here. We ask the God that whatever the father and the mother need, 
whoever they have to call on, that their spirit will be so loving and kind and giving that they will do all that they can to help this child to become your man. Keep them, guide them, uphold them through the storms, through the rain, through the sunshine, and enable the parents to walk with you, Lord. Strengthen their faith and help them to understand that you have given them an awesome responsibility. This life, this precious life, is not a play toy, but this is a gift from you. And they must treat this child as such. And they must be careful about how they live, what they say, and what they do. I ask that you would draw them closer to you, Father. Help them to walk the walk. Help our church family to be supportive of the parents and of the whole family. May our prayers ascend to you, not only on behalf of this child, but all of the children here. We thank you for your grace and for your mercy. Now forgive us for all of our sins and grant for your blessing upon Mason, Jeremiah, Goins, upon Jonathan, upon Kristen, so that their lives will not only reflect the love of Jesus Christ, but he will be glorified through them and other lives will be led to Jesus. We ask all of this in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Spirit, may we all say together, Amen. Amen. I present to you, let me give you this certificate. I present to you, Jonathan, this certificate which uh, notes this day, this date, with his name, birth date, and etc., so you can have this as a record for the future. And when he gets maybe about 14 or 15, you can tell him about this event. And you can show him that and tell him what happened and uh, who was there. I present to you, Pleasant Green, Jonathan, you walk up here. Yeah, because if I stand, I don't want to drop him. Because if I drop him, then I think, it, I think the whole family will be swarming on me then. Hey, fella, how you doing? Well, you a friendly little guy. Oh, he's handsome. Oh, friendly handsome. Okay. Je can I call you Jeremiah? <laughs> Jeremiah, God bless you and God keep you. Okay, Jonathan, okay, drop this past five. You and Christian, you all stand out here. You all stand right here. Church, I present to you Mason Jeremiah Goins, the father, Jonathan, and the mother, Kristen. Pray for him and for them. Amen. Amen. You might take your seat. Thank you, family. And family, be there when they need you now. <laughs>